And welcome to another edition of South Texas Crossfire. This is attorney Joe Flores reminding you to join us each and every week right here on KTMB with Lopez family and special thanks to my good friend Carlos Lopez. You guessed it, the Ted Turner of <laughs> South Texas Broadcasting. I've got a great guest on and it's somebody who has been uh, a judge for a very long time and now is also seeking your vote. She's already been in there as an associate judge. She wants to be there as your full-time judge for County Court at Law Number 5, a very important court. It's the Juvenile Justice Center. And I give you uh, Marty. I like to call Marty. you Marty, but Martha. And then we say Huerta Quintanilla. How yes. are you? Hi, Joe. Thank you. Now, now on the ballot, how's it going to read? Marta Huerta Quintanilla. Marta okay. Huerta. Okay, I remember that. Quintanilla. Yeah. And, and tell us a little bit about your education, training, background, where you grew up. Um, I grew up in Hebronville, Texas, so a big shout out to all my friends in Hebronville. Right. Uh, we have a lot of family. I just met somebody from, from Hebron with Hebron Roots Tommy here. Tommy Guns, Whole Beans. Yeah, right. I, I know the Whole Beans from Hebronville were uh, raised uh, fr good friends of mine. Wow. Um, and so I was uh, born and raised, graduated from Hebronville, um, Texas, Hebronville High School. Um, I went to UT uh, right afterwards. I went to UT, University of, of Texas um, at Austin, uh, where I graduated with a bachelor's in journalism. So I'm a, a fellow journalist. You should uh, be doing the show. I with would us. love to. I would yeah. love to. Yeah. I did more print print media. I, I got a PR degree, um, and what I uh, had an opportunity to write with the Daily Texan when I was there, award winning oh, wow. college newspaper. And then when I moved down to Corpus right after I graduated, um, I uh, was the production director at K99 Radio Station, where I did copyright uh, copy rather for. Um, for commercials, Amazing. and then um, I also wrote uh, um, some stories for the South Texas Catholic newspaper. It was a newspaper at that time, not not the magazine. Um, I did that for a little while. And, and what made you get into law? I'm sure you get this question a lot when people said you were a journalist, which is an extremely, it it's a fun. calling. Mm -hmm. But what made you so interested and excited in the law? Well, my sister, who's been a real uh, big role model to me, was was a lawyer already. She went straight out of uh, her uh, out of college, and she was uh, a lawyer at a, at a young age. So there was always that you know that seed that had been planted. And of course, me, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do what my sister does, you know. But um, that that was that seed. And then at, at um, she and Judge Robert Vargas, uh, who wasn't a judge at the time, were good friends. Uh, worked at the county attorney's office. He decided to run for the spot he's still in right now, County Court Number One, uh, and he won. Got involved with that campaign. It was a wonderful labor of love. It's just totally night and day. I can't day. believe he's been a judge for thirty years. Thirty years. I, it was it, it was an incredible experience. We look back now and was like, what? You know, we. It was definitely a labor of love, and we did everything just grassroots. I remember stapling and, and putting rubber bands to do door hangers and first and it, campaign. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, and it was just it, it was it was totally different. And would you have thought you were campaigning uh, for yourself down the road? Did you ever think you would I take think that, at that next point, step? Really? At that point, I'm like, I love doing this. Um, and then he gave me an opportunity to come on board and work at his court as his probate assistant. So it was part time. And I'm like, I, I, this is awesome. I want to do this. I want to be a judge. It's what I wanted to do. But it's, of course, you have to go to law school to do that. And I remember speaking with him and, and then my sister. My sister's like, are you sure you want to be a lawyer? You know, and I said, yes, I want to go to law school. So five years after, uh, I worked there with him for about a year. And um, I applied to law school and went to Thurgood Marshall. Uh, School of Law in Houston. Um, and I graduated relatively early in December. I took the February bar. So by the time I walked the, the stage, I was already a lawyer. I was very proud of myself for that because um, that, you know, the, as we know, uh, the Thurgood Marshall School of Law didn't have a very high bar passage rate. But it's what you put into it. And I always believed, uh, you know, if there was 50%, I remember sitting at a table with four people. I'm like, I wonder who the other one of you is going to be to pass. I remember, uh, you know, when I, as a Hispanic, took the bar and I sat in front of two other people, you know, they have you at the tables, and they said, first time? And I go, yes. And then they said, uh, ah, you'll get it the next time. Yeah. Okay, I said, great boost of confidence. You know, yeah. Luckily, I passed the first time. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, really uh, got wasted for the record uh, <laughs> afterwards. Because I was so stressed out about it. Uh, I mean, I slept with my law books. I mean, everybody take Absolutely. the bar exam. You know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. But it's a great achievement. And especially 
Thurgood Marshall, I want to say for the record there. I went to South Texas, but I had a lot of friends at Thurgood, and it offers a great opportunity for, for Latinos and for African Americans to become, and St. Mary's does too. They, they give great lawyers that come out of there, mm -hmm, great litigators and a lot of judges. And the fighters, the fighters, yeah, oh, there's yeah. a lot of fighters that come out of there. Um, I, I had a wonderful experience, and like I said, I had an opportunity, I passed the bar, came back, um, and uh, worked a little bit, um, um, and my sister and I opened up our own office, Gonzalez and Huerta, and the opportunity came up. Um, I was I was telling Mireya, I was, I was speaking to her earlier, and I said, you know, this was always my dream to do it, probably about this age, but the opportunity came up, a district court bench was opening, and after practicing only six years, um, I was uh, early 30s, I got elected to a district court bench. Um, and I served on that bench for one term. Um, the, the, the gentleman that had run um, against me the first time around said, I've already got the signs. There was a big issue going on with tort reform, Proposition 13. He we really all got caught into that, and to this day, I say it's been a disservice to the elderly. Absolutely. It's been a disservice. And but that did not. Well, keep you're in you the medical down. field. You, yeah, you I know saw it. it. Yes, and I, you know, care I, has gone down, and it's not. And insurance rates have not gone down, and and I think that. But you kept fighting. You kept staying on the bench. I did. I did. At the time, I had. You're two, a fighter. Two, well, that's, I, I, I am. I really am. I'll fight for what I believe in, and I'll fight for these children that in that court. In and let's court let's turn five. to that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, that, I mean, poor Carl Lewis. Yeah. I believe that he was a great judge, but I think that that bench and that stress drove him to his health problems, at least at least partially. And and uh, I've seen you up there on that bench, and yes, you sir. carry yourself very well. Thank you. And I, and I think that a judge has to connect with the community that Absolutely. you're with. You come from a very traditional Hispanic uh, upbringing, and a lot of the people that are there, I've seen you even get after them, sort of in a motherly way. Absolutely, yes. Because you've got 18-year-olds raising children, mm -hmm. and then they get a CPS complaint. So talk to us about the extreme stress and, and how you manage that when you're up on that bench. Um, I, mean, I, I get asked that a lot. Um, I had an opportunity, actually, when Carl got sick, I went in to, to sit for him I as remember. a visiting judge, and then sadly he passed, and um, I became the interim judge until Terry Shamsey came on board. I, uh, Judge Shamsey, I, I worked as a visiting judge for him as well, and then when Judge Chesney came on this, this last term, um, he hired me to become the associate judge there. So it's a part-time, very part-time, uh, earns $20,000, uh, and I'm there for 10 hours a week. 10 long hours, I say, oh, because yeah. <laughs> I'm there a lot more than 10 hours, right. but I'm not, obviously not doing it for the money. Um, so I had an opportunity to, and I know that that has been like a big uh, an issue in this campaign where uh, the opponents are saying, um, there's not, if I'm elected, there's not gonna be a visiting judge there. Um, this is my answer to that. Um, that that uh, judgeship was created at no additional expense to the taxpayers. What he did is he found monies from other petty accounts or whatever and, and came up with that at $20,000. Um, for whatever reason, he felt he needed that. Um, what I've been doing is um, I've been sharing the load, uh, making um, very tough decisions in cases ranging from capital murder to aggravated sexual assault of a child to removing children, uh, abuse and neglected children, to placing children back in homes, to working with families, guardianship cases involving the elderly uh, and those who can't care for themselves, and also hearing uh, cases that are appeals from JP court. So it's a big, uh, uh, a different amount of case or different types of cases rather that come through there um, so as associate judge I think it's different I think whoever takes the, the job I I believe that it, it can't hurt to keep that person there to keep an associate judge uh, there it's not going to cost the taxpayers any additional money um, and it can only help because this is not an eight to five job. You don't get there, it's, I'm gonna be at seven, I'm gonna start my docket at eight. No. Well, there's a lot of people, yourself included, that if you're in, in, in set for court, you've got kids, you drop kids off, the attorneys, you know, the, the, the parents that are coming in, the kids themselves need to be, to, to, to be brought. It, the court needs to be uh, flexible. Okay. Very and flexible. Work. A lot of these people are riding on a bus. To exactly. Get over there. Exactly. They have two jobs, and then they're given a checklist to prove that they're a good parent, and then they have to go to all these classes. It sets it up for failure. 
You know, there's I mean, so a lot much of, that they have so to do. Much they right. have to do. Even though, you know, Tara uh, from CPS is a great friend of mine that that leads mm-hmm. it. Uh, but no institution is perfect. We've seen the tragedies of foster care. Sometimes there's things that slip through the net. You've got switching gears, politics. You've got two other people that are running against you. Now, some people have said, this is the friendliest primary I've ever seen. Everybody's very ladylike and cordial to one another. Uh, and, it uh, you be, know, as it, as should, it be. should be. But it is a primary. And that means Democratic primaries, as the days come and we're airing this, it's going to get tough. Right. As you're knocking on the doors, and I want to give you, Judge, the opportunity to block walk right here, and you've done thousands of doors already. Let's knock on 100,000 doors right now that are watching you. Why should they vote for you above the other two opponents? There's a lot to be said for experience, Joe. So I'm Martha Huerta Quintanilla, um, and I'm asking for your vote and your support. Uh, Why? Uh, I have been a judge for over 14 years. I have made the tough decisions in this community from having to impose a death penalty on a person, uh, tried a six-week death penalty case, uh, triple triple capital murder, to hundreds of millions of dollars in in civil lawsuits, to uh, family law cases, to juvenile cases. I have extensive experience judging the juvenile law and the CPS cases. Not as an advocate, but as a judge in that position. I'm there now. I want to continue to be there. There's so much work to be done, uh, and I want to continue to serve the needs of those children and of this community. We have to work with these children to make this community a better place to live, and I can do that, and I want to continue to do that. Very well said. That's uh, Martha Huerta Quintanilla. Uh, Judge Marty, as a lot of us affectionately like to call her, running for Court 5 Juvenile Justice Center. Uh, If you don't think that's an important court, you are mistaken. The very future of our society depends on that court. I want to thank you, Judge, for coming by. I wish you the very best in your election. Thank you. And don't forget to like me on Facebook, Judge Martha Huerta Quintanilla. Oh, and the magic number in case somebody needs a yard sign, T-shirts, get pumped up, magnets on the camera. I have all all that you need. You either like me on Facebook and message me on, that's the easiest way to get to me. If not, 537-8151. Um, that's my husband. He's got it attached to his... Pullover version. bird. He's the one with the A-frame. That's yeah. Martha Quintanilla. White truck with the Right a- there at Cruising Around Corpus. That's You'll right. 537-8151. Bert's my husband. Don't forget to park it at the mall on Saturdays. Just a political trick that I learned <laughs> from the best. You know, <laughs> Renan and Shamsi. Absolutely. Anyway, we're out of time, thank you, but thank you. Thank you. Have you or a loved one suffered a stroke, heart attack, unexplained low blood pressure, or death during dialysis? The FDA has issued warnings and recalled the product Graniflow and Naturalite used in dialysis. At least one national company failed to warn the public that over 900 people had suffered cardiac arrest or death. A condition called metabolic alkalosis developed, which may have caused the harm. Call the law offices of Joe Flores today. With a combined 25 years of experience in the medical field and as a trial lawyer, Joe Flores can help. Call now. 1-800-273-8255. 